One of my fans asked me how I feel about the whole vast topic of love. And to address that, I want to tell you some stuff about myself. I am someone who is in love. Let's get that out of the way now because before I get all these accusations of bias when I talk about the rest of this topic, I am in love. And it's pretty awesome. Like, love can hurt, you know, it's a topic of how I don't know how many songs, right? Every day somebody's writing another song, but love hurts, so we all know it. However, what we don't like to focus on so much in this culture is how much it's awesome when it's happening, when you are in love. There's this focus on being out of love, of breaking up, of relationships failing, divorce, and all this stuff. And very simply put, that isn't the majority of cases. People focus on the end of it instead of the journey where a relationship can end, but that has nothing to do with what happened in the middle. What happened in the middle of that relationship, when you were happy, when things were good, even if it ended on the worst possible level, still happened. It was still good. It still mattered. And every time you take that first step on the journey of I like somebody, and then you take another step to I love them and you accept it, you work with it, you embrace these feelings and you let yourself be vulnerable and all the wonderful, terrible, awesome stuff that gets wrapped up in being with another person on that level, when that happens, it's ineffable. There is no words for it. That We don't have, I don't believe, the poetry in our language to actually convey to somebody who never had been there before or felt it, I couldn't explain it to them. I can only talk about it to somebody almost who knows what I mean, because it's ineffable. It cannot be expressed. And it is that kind of transcendent feeling of wonderfulness and goodness and just gush out of your fucking ears love that I can't wrap in a package for you. I can't sit there and tell you, oh, I feel this, that, and the other about it, because when you're in it, you're in it, and it hits you like a Mack truck. You are in love. You roll with it right then. That's all you can do. You can only feel it and express it and live it. And when people say, is there love at first sight? Well, for a momentary, what might start out as a pretty unromantic break to all of this, no, I don't think so. I don't think there's love at first sight. What I think is there's like at first sight. And love builds with time and trust and understanding and simple talking and being with one another, it builds and it grows. And that's not to say that you can't really like someone from the beginning when you first meet them. You certainly can. But let's all be honest, do we really know somebody in that first moment to say that we love them? Love, as much as it gets bandied around now, such an almost meaningless concept with the word, does mean something. And it means something fundamentally huge and powerful. And, oh, I love them. Do you know them? Well, if you don't know them, you might think you love them, but you probably love the idea of them that you have. And that idea is seductive. But real love that is built from long-term understanding and simple going through life with another person, from commitment and upholding that commitment, comes love, true love. Where you look at the other person and say, look, we've been through a lot together. And at the end of the day, after everything's said and done, after you've been through the runaround and the rat race of the day, you can look back and say, you know, life kind of sucked today, but it's all right now that I'm with you. That's what it comes down to. It's the simplest way I can possibly put it. That person becomes your refuge, your place to belong when everything else sucks. That's when you can know that there is love, I think. When you had the worst of days possible, right? When everything just went wrong in every way possible and you go to that person and it's okay now. You're there. You're at your place. Your zen, if you will, has been reached because you're complete. You're with them now. They've bridged the missing part of you. They've allowed you to be fully who you are. Because I don't believe, let's address that, in a literal someone completes you as though you're missing something part. I believe more that someone else can help you reach those parts of you that normally you can't feel so much. Those other parts to yourself that you might be uncomfortable with or that you might not know how to access or deal with, they can help you reach those parts of yourself. And that's how I think people feel complete with other people is that person magnifies within themselves the positive traits that they have. No one else can give you something to make you live or to make you happy beyond a certain point. It has to come from you as much as them. And I think that when you have true love, 
for however you wish to take that turn in your own personal life, you have somebody that can remind you of the best parts of yourself. And then you can remind them of the best parts of themselves, and it becomes a cycle that's beautiful and positive. A cycle where you both grow because you're growing, and just because you're with them, your life is becoming better. That is a part of it. And also, it comes down to this whole friendship point, like where before you can truly, I believe, love somebody, you have to be friends with them. You have to be able to hang out with them, enjoy their company, not be sexual, not be romantic all the time, not be wrapped up in it all the time, but just sometimes you have to be bros. Like, to put it in a very simple way, sometimes you just have to hang out with them. And if you can't do that with somebody, well, you don't have a further basis to build something called love on if you can't just enjoy their company simply for who they are without the romantic entanglements and the sexuality and the buzz of the, the high of the love itself. If you can't just enjoy them for them, then you need to be careful too. <sighs> to take this all to a very simple, very easy to explain point, when you are in love with somebody, there's nothing else like it. There's no drug, there's no feeling, there's no anything in this world that quite gives you the same level of wonderful completeness, wholeness, and totality of life that makes everything glow, if you will. When you're walking around, not it's not just that the grass is green and the sun is shining and everything smells great. It's that the grass is green, the sun is shining, everything smells great, and you get to see that person at the end of it. That's where love comes from. When everything else, it doesn't become all about them, but they add to everything else you have already. Your whole life becomes more perfect because they're there to share it with you. And yes, to you, Danielle, I love you. I get to share that life with you, and there are no words for it. There aren't. Just I could sit here and wax poetically all day, perhaps, and still not hit the nail on the head with what that means. But I can certainly try. <laughs> and I can certainly make a nice video about it where I try to explain to other people that if this all boils down to go with it. Don't worry about love. Don't think you have to seek it out. Don't think that, oh no, I'm not in love now. What is my life going to mean? Or it's not going to find me. It will. You just have to pay attention. Don't look for love, though. Don't say, I have to be in love. Look for somebody you like. Look for that person that, hey, you know, they're cute. I can spend time with them. We're friends. We get along. Wait a minute. This could be something. It builds, it evolves, it grows, and is nurtured, kind of like a plant. You have to water it slowly. You can't have a beanstalk grow and produce beans in a night, and love is the same way. It must be nurtured. It must grow slowly, be cared for, and... You must be invested in it. You can't walk away from it. You can't half-ass it. It's a total commitment from you. And it's a commitment that, if you ask me, you'd be a fool to not make. That's something to exalt in, I think. And in the end of the day, cars come. <laughs> <laughs> Don't love you.